So it was uh, quite some time ago. I was in my 20s. I was living an hour north of here in Katanning. I was happy. I was energetic. I was working seven days a week at three different jobs. I worked for the Agency on Aging and did home visits to seniors during the day. I worked at the YMCA in the evening and on Saturdays. And then on Sundays, I played at a cute little chapel with 14 pews. And that was my life. I got up, I worked, I worked out, I ate well, I was very healthy. Until one day, I woke up and I couldn't stand up. I had fluctuating symptoms over a period of time. I had dizziness, I had joint weakness, I had joint pain, I had tingling, I had, my, my legs felt like, tr well, like tree trunks. My legs felt like they weren't gonna hold me up anymore and I, I'm not that big of a person. But I just wasn't me anymore. And I had this feeling that I was kind of out of my body looking at my body. Um, it was very scary. I called off both my jobs for one week, which I never did. I still went to church the following Sunday. And over the course of months and months, I went through doctors, I went through testing, and no one could find anything. I was just a healthy girl in my 20s that suddenly something was going on. After eight months of testing, my doctor decided to randomly test me for everything they hadn't yet tested me for, and it came up as Lyme disease. I had never really heard of it. I knew nothing about it. I simply said, okay, well, there's an answer. What do we do? They gave me four weeks of an antibiotic, and bam, I was healed, or so I thought. A few months later, I woke up, and my hand was like this, and I couldn't move it. I went to work, because that's what I did, and they sent me home. I couldn't write, I couldn't type, I couldn't do anything again. And I'm like, why is this back? We already went through this. I called the doctor, and I got the answer from the doctor, well, you were already treated for Lyme disease, it must be in your head. I said, okay. That was the last time I went to him. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to figure this out because, you know, I'm in my 20s. I have a lot going on here. And I, have, I remember saying to my best friend at the time, I don't have time to be sick. And her response was, who has time to be sick? <laughs> but I didn't have time to be sick, and I'm not going to deal with it. And I pushed through, and I did research, and I found out that it's actually a very chronic condition once it's caught so late as it was with me. So I went through, I found a Lyme doctor, I went through more treatment, it was very difficult, it makes you very sick, sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. I ended up being very uh, light sensitive and sound sensitive, I had seizures, I couldn't walk for a while, I was in a wheelchair for a while, but through all of it, I played every Sunday. For some reason, every Sunday, I was good enough to get there. I couldn't drive anymore, my mom took me, and I... There was a very small church. I was able to pivot off of the end of the first pew to the piano right there to get back and forth on a Sunday morning. But I made it every week. And I knew there was a reason for that. I did a lot of praying, and I did a lot of... I was angry. I was sad. And there was a lot going on of thinking, why in the world is this happening to me? But that's what it was. And there was one night I was so light and sound sensitive, I couldn't watch TV, I was so bored, I had nothing to do, and I went upstairs, I had laundry on the second floor of my house, and I well, crawled upstairs one step at a time. And I sat in front of the washer and watched the laundry spin because I had a front loader. And that's all, I could that's all I could do. I couldn't handle anything louder or brighter than that, and I thought, this is not okay. And what am I going to do about this? So at that point, kind of being a little bit reserved to maybe this is what I'm going to be, like, well, okay, then what's my new plan? I said, okay, I'm going to help people who are also going through this find the right treatment to get out of it. So, of course, I took to the Internet. And I found on Yahoo.com a series of support groups based by state. I went on to the Pennsylvania and talked to a decent amount of people, mostly from Philadelphia, because it, apparently I was the only one in Pittsburgh with Lyme disease. But I talked to people, and if anybody asked for help or for recommendations, I answered. That's just what I did. So meanwhile in White Oak. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so you know, I have a note here about where to start, but I think it's important to say that um, you know, Joe's story of her symptoms of Lyme disease 
were very similar to mine and very similar to many other people's um, where they have all these goofy symptoms and go through all these tests and there aren't any answers. And eventually you reach the point where your doctor tells you you're nuts, but you know in your gut um, there's something actually wrong with you. So for me, it started uh, in the summer, you know, years ago, and um, I woke up one day uh, and I was dizzy, um, kind of like what Joe said, but it was a little different. I was dizzy, and, and that lasted a couple of weeks, um, but it wasn't something I just ignored. Like, after a few days, I went to the doctor, and um, I have a history of a high heart rate, so he gave me, like, a holster thing to wear for an entire day to check my heart, and and it was fine. Like, everything was fine, and, and then it went away eventually. The dizziness went away, and um, I was good. I didn't really think much of it after that. Uh, well, side note, he did give me some pills for dizziness, and it seemed to work. But again, it, it, things got better. I didn't really think much else. But later that year, uh, around Christmas time, it came back, uh, the dizziness, it was worse. And I also experienced uh, similar symptoms to what Joe had, which is it's like, almost like his out-of-body experience. It's, it's, the technical term is called derealization. Um, but, it, but you feel like you're not quite in control of your own body. It's like you're watching a movie of your life almost. Um, but that happened, and I was taking the dizzy pills again to try to get out of this, and I ended up having an allergic reaction to them. I had to go to the hospital. And, and after all that, uh, it, it was just downhill for months. I mean, I, went, I had headaches, light sensitivity like Joe did. I had muscle spasms like were all over my body, like little twitches, um, insomnia, fatigue, which was terrible. I would have horrible fatigue. I would sleep all night, wake up, and by noon I was completely exhausted. Um, went through a ton of tests, went through sleep studies, heart studies, MRIs, uh, neurological tests. Nobody had any answer. And eventually my PCP did say to me, he's like, I think you're not so much making it up, but I think it's in your head. And I kind of believed them, but I knew some, this wasn't right. Like something is definitely wrong with me. So I switched doctors and he did some, some of the same tests, but not all the same because they were already done. And while this was going on, of course, you know, I'm looking online, you know, they say you shouldn't do that sort of thing, but the thing is that's, that's basically what saved me here was my own determination to figure out what was wrong um, because I eventually went to my doctor and I was completely fed up and frustrated and angry and scared. I mean, I thought my life, I thought that was, I was going to die. And um, I said to my doctor, as I think this is either uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, or Lyme disease. And he, and he you know, looked me over. He's like, oh, there's no fibromyalgia. I said that testing me for Lyme disease, and, and that's what it was. So now that I had this diagnosis and some pills, and I wanted to know more about it and find a doctor to treat it. So I went on Yahoo, just like Joe did, and um, went on this Yahoo group for Lyme disease and asked, does anybody know of a doctor in Pittsburgh area? And the person that replied was Joe. And that's, that's how we started. Now, both of our stories individually took a lot of perseverance. It took a lot of fighting for ourselves and listening to our gut feelings, which I will say time and time again is definitely how God speaks to me and I think how God speaks to a lot of people. It's that gut feeling and conscience that tells you what's the right direction here. But... So that's how we met, but that doesn't mean everything was rainbows and butterflies right then. We were both still sick. We were introduced to each other via the internet. We took a liking to each other and started dating and eventually got married, but that doesn't mean that's the end of the story. We were still, we were still pretty, pretty down at the time, but now we had support. Now we had our Barnabases, and now we had what we needed. That being said, we've dealt with some tragedy through it. As some of you know, my mom died five days before our wedding. She was sick the whole time we were together. But through all of it, God was there and God guided us and he broke us down to get us where he needed us to be. At the end of the call, end of the book that some of us are reading, Adam Hamilton asks, what wouldn't have happened if God hadn't responded to his call? 
or if other stories hadn't responded to their call. And what wouldn't have happened if we hadn't responded the way we did? Number one, we wouldn't be together. Number two, we wouldn't be the family that we are, which means I never would have relocated to White Oak. We never would have met the Buckers who invited us here. So we're here because this is where God led us through a crazy series of pain and discomfort, but never leaving our side.